graphically the trombone poetry. <laughs> Some old things. I've been uh, scraping various barrels because I had this um, broadcast earlier on, and I thought it's only fitting that, given the chance to broadcast my poems to the whole of Croydon, that I should uh, dig out a few old, trusty ones. So there'll be some familiar ones to those who've uh, followed the illustrious career of Cromwell poetry for years and years, but also some new ones, uh, no less obscure than the old ones. So. This is um, this short one, just to ease you in, is um, a little play on proverbs, just experimenting with proverbs from different uh, cultures, different countries, and seeing what happens if they rub up against each other. It's called uh, Looking on the Bright Side. Death, say the Persians, is a camel that lies down at every door. The Danes bring the good news. Death does not blow a trumpet. <laughs> um, part of what I do with this uh, bit of tubing here, this hooter, is to play in what's called big bands. I'm sure there's at least two people in here, or three people who hate big bands, and they're now leaving the room. It's a kind of jazz thing, it's a 16 piece orchestra, and um, there's a few of them still knocking about in London. This is a uh, this is to do with that. It's called devotion. Persisting for decades well south of the city, a strange sect gathers, preparing in back rooms the odd public ceremony. Rules of the game. Each player brings an instrument, takes a seat by a rank, opens a large envelope for coded instructions. A count of four triggers deep breaths and 16 pairs of hands fling the sound across the room, buffeting the air. Booting, baritone, saxophone, fretwork, high octane, octave, obstacle, choruses, drum, firework, brass. A bouncing juggernaut in revivalist ritual, a machine easy to run. Just add beer and stand well back. <laughs> Um, I run a little band, no, it's not 16 piece because I can't afford that, a few people can, it's only a, a, a six piece band, it's, a, it's called the Vintage Tea Dance Orchestra, so um, we're playing in a, in a lovely pub just near Old Street, round about on Sunday afternoon at four o'clock, if you're anywhere near the Old Fountain, um, please drop in, we should be dishing out all kinds of 30s nonsense for you. 
And the band was put together when uh, I was asked to play at the Vintage Festival, the first one uh, a couple of years ago, and uh, I wondered what that would be like. And I wrote this poem in anticip anticipation of that festival called Vintage Stuff. Their heads may spin, apart from anything else, when the burlesque dancers twig that a live band will oust the binary monotony of the backing track. Can they shimmer in G-sharp? Will they get their middle eights in a twist? It will be the good old days, perhaps even the naughty old nights, at the August Nostalgia Festival. Sandbags, not tea bags, at the 40s tea dance. Glenn Miller's barnacled trombone will be dredged up yet again. All appearances will be subject to the jackboot of fashion. Let the light and bitter be unrationed, unfurl the sandwiches of victory. Parade the pork pies of freedom. Send three and fourpence, we're going to a dance. Now, I figure that, um, not unusually at events like this, there's quite a few musicians in the room and uh, musically aware people, so I'm going to risk inviting you to accompany me because I can't afford electronica or a backing band, so I wonder if you could just go like that, and if you're not used to clicking your fingers, you could just tap your forehead gently on the table in front of you and time the music <laughs> while I play this tune of mine called um, South of the River. tube station the other day and uh, was confronted by various people flogging stuff or promoting stuff or trying to uh, change your view of the universe, trying to get you to subscribe to some kind of a uh, doctrine and um, 
I scribbled this. This is a, a recent attempt to uh, fathom what these people are doing. It's called Losers. Saturday outside Stratford Station, we face a rash of wide-eyed zealots milling around, brandishing leaflets, posing the puzzle. Is life a game? All kitted out in bright yellow t-shirts, the heavenly team scores an own goal. <laughs> now this is the first um, tonight of my foundlings. This is a, an invention I've been uh, peddling for a while now, where I recycle old newspapers in an attempt to appear green. And according to a very strict recipe, you take a phrase that you like across a column on page one, and do the same page two, and so on and so on. Through the entire paper, every page that's got articles, you must select a phrase that you like across a column, ignoring any split words. And then you've got to kick them around a bit and see if you can sort them into one of the poems that's hidden in that newspaper. So it's a kind of found poem, that's what I'm calling the foundling. And this was taken from um, a Caribbean paper called Sunday Sun. That's called Leave It. As we prepare and continue to celebrate economic growth in the Barbados economy in 2011, a big stumbling block would be employed for the general good, with seminars targeted at the critical role of agencies and stevedoring. It was devastating news. While bad things could happen in a one-day symposium, firearms and other weapons would be a good starting point to restore nightlife. <laughs> the system generates a great deal of valuable <coughs> proverbs or philosophical obscene language and tremendous benefits based on statistics. Notwithstanding the strong symbolism of maintaining international money laundering and hanky-panky in the tendering <laughs> and operations, there is no substitute for pictorial depictions of sexual activity or nudity <laughs> in barrels with cakes, bread and Beethoven's Fifth Symphony. <laughs> <laughs> Laughing out loud while participating in the fun, like newborn turtles, we leave it to the sociologists. <laughs> yes, tune There's uh, always uh, loads of mathematicians present, so I've written this um, for them, and I hope you'll enjoy it. 
I'm not really sure what it's called at, at the moment. It's provisionally called Math Poem, which is not a very nice name. It may not be a nice poem. And I also can't read it because I get these purple lights and it's very difficult to see what the hell I'm doing. It's quite a manoeuvre actually. I'm going to have to buy some binoculars or a miner's helmet. <laughs> For the average reader, mathematical poems mean only a puzzle, a mere cipher, hard to square with meter and meaning. Adding numbers to poems is not something calculated to double your readership. Numerous poets, about 87, have reckoned it worth trying. Though critical opinion is divided, output is variable from total success and many figure that the Ulipo group is a prime example, to work whose value is approximately zero, or possibly negative. At times, such poems seem willfully odd, even deranged. The feeling that, th th that this is an improper focus for poetry may be at the base of their objections. We are not counting digital poetry, which we may set aside here, one solution is to use complex wordplay. This may trick some people. A high percentage of writers are, is unequal to the task due to innumeracy. Another factor is modes and fashions whose merit is imaginary. Nonetheless, we will do our bit in this arduous field redoubling our efforts to integrate the abstract, pushing the limits of normal verse, extending its range to a higher plane. To sum up, we should give no quarter to irrational attitudes, as this angle of approach and the resultant programme will pay poetic dividends. There's a thing, um, the group, the Ulipo, that I'm very fond of, is, there's a French group mostly, there's a few other non-French people in it, but it's mostly made up of poets and mathematicians, and um, one of the things they made up was the Metro poem, which you can try, whether or not, if you're on the tube, let alone the Metro, and you sit down on the tube at the start of your journey and think of the first line of your poem as the train moves on, but you're not allowed to write anything until it stops at the next station. And then you scribble down that line, and then it moves, and you have to think of the second line of your poem, not writing anything while it's moving, and then it stops, you scribble that down, a siren goes off, and then when you arrive at your destination, you get off the train and write the last line of the poem. It makes the journeys go really quickly. A metro poem. This is called Are We There Yet? A boy with collapsible binoculars collapses the distance between himself and the platform, between his dad and other dads. Another boy asks, are we going out of the tunnel? I see no end to it. The fumbling replications, the questions in the dark. This one's even more obscure. It's uh, another metro poem. It's um, obliquely horticultural you'll pardon the expression, deep. In a neat row, I take my place with sundry subsoil gardeners, umbrella dibble rain watering the seed of another poet.
That's a, a new tune, uh, de deliberately meant to sound old, called Newington Butts. Um, this is a bit of a cantankerous poem called um, Declining to Like. I was like witless, I had been like a sheep, I had been like gormous, I am like, bah, I would be like hopeless, I would be like a parrot, I would have been like useless, I will have been like, 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 it's like relentless, it's like halitosis, it's like brainless, it's like flatulence, it's like endless, it's like a pox, it's like joyless, it's like rather unlikable. <laughs> Can't stand that word. Um, here's another foundling, um, this time taken from uh, a paper you're familiar with, the, the Japan Times, called A Small Room. The voters of the Republic of Ireland operate as shops plying the tourist trade with the aim of creating a championship, mostly by text message, ranging from written academic criticism to some form of mental disorder. The root cause of slums is not Belgian radio stations <laughs> broadcasting about the meaning of number theory and art forms using computers or spotted pelts. A small room inside a brick and cycling shorts. Enough is enough. And then it wasn't. <laughs> I shall close um, this escapade with um, some proverbs, <laughs> which uh, again uh, are an invention of uh, Ulipo. And uh, their proverbs are obviously French, but mine are, luckily for us, in English. Proverbs. Oh, by the way, if you feel free to visit my site any time and, uh, you know, befriend me in a kind of distant, digital kind of way. And uh, there's a m mailing list, if you're interested, for a monthly chronicle of my glorious adventures, like this one, and news of what's to come. Thank you. Perverts. The road to hell is the spice of life. Better the devil you know than never to have loved at all. <laughs> Everything comes to him who waits for no man. Better late than sorry. <laughs> Beauty is the best policy. <laughs> Boys will be bygones. <laughs> you can't make an omelette out of a sow's ear. <laughs> Dead men butter no parsnips. <laughs> <laughs> you can lead a horse to water, but you can't have it both ways. <laughs> Red sky at night, wake up with fleas. <laughs> Straightforward enough, really. Um, just two more. Every dog has a silver lining. <laughs> and finally, my favorite. A fool and his money is a friend indeed. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much.